Welcome to Blender Frenzy, I'm Justin, and in the next few videos I'm going to show you how to make some holes in a complicated model so that it doesn't mess everything else up. So in this video we're going to focus on just circular holes, but I'll show you all of the holes that we're going to make. So here's the first one we're going to do, this circular hole here in the front, and then a couple circular ones on the side. That's the first video. And then uh, in the next video or two, I'm going to show you how to do some square holes with some complicated extrusions, well not too complicated, but then um, also something like this up here on the front of the head and then back here on the side. And we can see that here without our texture, this is what all that looks like. So here are the square holes plus uh, some of like the ramps that you can see it kind of like going up this way with these holes going in in the middle. Uh, here's some more square holes and here are the circle holes that we're going to put in the front and the side of the skull and again in this video we're just going to be focusing on the circular holes and then along the way before i show you on the skull i show you how to do it on a simple sphere like this uh, and again we're just creating these shapes uh, so that they are localized and they don't cause pinching all the way around the model and then so back here along with the texture it just gives it a little bit more definition a little bit more detail so the texture isn't doing all of the work so when you're ready, let's get started. If you want to see more Terminator stuff, just come over to BlenderFrenzy.com and you can see my new Blender Frenzy VFX course all about head tracking in Blender using the Terminator skull that we're making. Click take a look and then you can see what that's all about. If you scroll down, you'll get the skull. Uh, you'll see what we're going to create, making it look like the Terminator skull is under your skin. Whole bunch of stuff on how to film and how to create negative space and all of the good stuff here, you can check that out. If you just want the free starting file, start with the freebie single downloads. And then I've got a couple of them up here. I'll be adding more to this, but you can start with the T800 Metal Skull starting blend file here. And that is so you can start ready to go with the series, building your metal skull. And of course, if you want more, you can go to the Blender freebies, click sign up, and then you can see the member levels and what you can expect from those. You can also see what's inside and then scroll down to see all of the videos and extra videos on the pro that you'll be receiving if you want. And again, that's blenderfrenzy.com. So now let's head back to the video. Okay, so this is what we have so far. If you've been following along in the series, if you haven't, go back and check out how we got here with all of our modeling and our uh, projections, our image projections. This is what we have so far. And let's make some holes. Uh, some more holes at least. Um, we're going to make some holes that go in here and then over here on the side of the head. And I don't think I'm going to do these down here, but uh, definitely these two here. Just to add some more detail so it's not just the texture, but we want to do it in a way that it doesn't mess up the rest of our model. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you first on a sphere. So it's going to look something like that. And you can see that each of these shapes that we have here, uh, except for maybe this one, you can see a little bit of pinching there. But most of them don't have any sort of pinching that's going around the sphere. It is just localized to this area and then the rest of it is smooth. So I started off with a cube and then I did subdivision and made it a circle. If I take one of these, faces here and then I press I to inset that. Uh, let me actually do it without subdivision first so you can see we have face and then I to inset and then E to extrude in for the hole. You can see this is square but if I enable my subdivision surface you can see that it is now a circle. And subdivision averages out the geometry where it rounds out those corners, especially if you don't have supporting loop cuts for making more angles and uh, sharp edges. But if I turn off my overlays here, you can see that this is just fine. So uh, circular holes that go into our model uh, are going to be the easiest. Now we can also come in here and define the back and the front by adding a loop cut inside and dragging it to the back and then a loop cut inside dragging it to the front and if we turn it on you can see it's just defining that hole a little bit more. Uh, if I undo those you can see and then if I redo them you can see it just makes the edges a little bit sharper. And I'm going to bump up the subdivisions just so it's a little bit more smooth and you can see what that looks like. So this is what we're going to be doing, but we also are going to do it on not just one face, but we're going to actually merge several faces. So it's the same thing. If we take 
these four and then I to inset all together like that. Then we can E to extrude those out, something like that. But if we do it this way, we actually don't have a circle and that's because we have more geometry. We have this edge loop that's going down in the middle and that would be the same here if we had an edge loop going down the middle here. You can see that's no longer a circular shape because it's starting to retain the original square shape. And like I said, that is because of supporting geometry. So we'll get to that in just a little bit, but that's why it's happening here. So what we want to do before we extrude this actually, so we can I to inset, and then make sure you come up to edit, preferences, add-ons, loop tools, and then make sure that is checked. And then with these selected, we can right click and then go to loop tools, circle. And then down here we have some options. The first option I'm gonna change is to fit inside. That's gonna make that a little bit smaller. And then flatten, if I click that, or if I don't click that, then it kind of maintains that shape a little bit more, but for some reason the flatten isn't actually flattening it like it should. So what I can do instead, and actually everything else is, is good here. If, oh, here we go, we can rotate it with the angle like that. So that's, that's cool. Um, just just that not sure what regular does but you can play around the, with these settings but now to flatten this we can press s to scale and then z now this is only if you're in normal transform orientation mode because normal is the direction that the faces are facing so we want to scale it s z zero enter and then there we go now it's flattened so we can scale it down now and then E to extrude that in. And now when we come to our subdivision, it's gonna have a little bit more of a sphere shape. And then we can do the same thing inside, add the loop cuts with Control R to the front and the back, like that. Perfect, so that is what we're gonna do for the first several holes. So coming back here, let's go to our split view up here. Uh, and let's go out of subdivision and select these faces. And of course, remember because it's mirrored, we've got our mirror on. We can select those four, I to inset, just like we did before. Right click, loop tools, circle, and then we can mess with these around here to get the proper angle. Uh, we want fit inside and then flatten. We're gonna do our own flattening that's gonna be S, Z, zero, enter. And now we can scale it down and just kind of move it over this hole. So now we're getting ready and we can E to extrude that out. And this is then what it looks like. So let's go ahead and add our loop cuts here. Going in the back and with subdivision it's very difficult because it just goes really slowly. So just double G to slide that and then take this up and we will uh, define those like that. Okay, perfect. Now, if you wanted to go overboard, you can also put a loop cut around here like this and pull that in and that will really make that uh, edge really sharp, but it's really unnecessary. So I'm just gonna X and then dissolve those edges. We don't need those. Okay, and after you change your geometry, it's best to reproject everything. And again, we've done all of this before in previous videos. So if you don't know what I'm doing, go back and watch those. But I'm gonna go into the front camera over here and then select the front UV map index, which is this right here. Let's go out of subdivision over here. And you can see it's kind of doing something, but it's not lined up properly. So this selected cam front and then you project from view. And now you can see it's reprojected it properly over here. And now back to our layout. Here we go. First hole done or first couple holes done. Okay, so let's come over here. Let's do this hole now. Let's go to our split view again and go to the side view over here. So uh, we got to figure out the geometry here. So we've got quite a bit of faces here. We've got these faces, which I think we're going to use all of those. But I don't want it to be from all the way up here. Um, so I'm going to add 
some geometry, which we'll add a loop cut here and just keep it in the middle there. And that's okay because it's not messing up our geometry too much. So you just want to make sure you're just not adding too many loop cuts, but this is going to serve our purposes pretty good here because then we can take these. I'm going to take this one as well. I'm going to just going to try this. I didn't do this last time, but I'm going to try it. We're going to I to inset and then right click loop tools circle. Okay, there we go. Um, move that angle there. Yeah, it's our, it kind of remembered my preferences. Okay, move it here, S, Z, and zero to make that flat. I can also look over here at what I'm doing. So you can see now that that's flat. Okay, and then we can scale it to fit. Now this picture is kind of squished. I know that's supposed to be round, so I'm just gonna keep it like this. E to extrude add in our supporting loops and take a look at what we have. All right, not too bad. Uh, let me see about pinching. So we, we do have some pinching here and the way we can deal with that is just take some of these points and just drag them away from each other. They're just too close to each other. We didn't get them room to breathe like that. And we can probably even do it a little bit more. Uh, let's just, I'm just double G to slide them. So I'm not actually grabbing them and moving them. Just double G slides them along the geometry. So it doesn't, so it doesn't push or pull anything out of place. Uh, same thing up here. Let's just double G like this and maybe pull this out. Just give some breathing room here. Maybe also up here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's not too bad. Down here is a little bit better. Up here is a little bit weird. And I think that is because, yeah, we are inset on that. Um, I could bring this in, but actually I'm just probably going to bring the whole circle out. So let's take, uh, the way we can do this easily is just take these faces here. I'm going to circle select these faces and then control plus until we have the whole circle selected and then just grab those on the Z and pull them out. Again, Z is in the normal, um, you might have to grab on the X if you're not in the normal, if you're on the global, um, but just kind of be mindful of that. Maybe take these points and I'm just going to G to grab them and move them out a little bit. The, now, now here I am kind of adjusting, I'm pulling and pushing the geometry um, just so it kind of matches a little bit better. Um, and then maybe do this again and take the hole and then rotate it, press Z twice so that it's the global Z, so up and down and just rotate it just slightly, maybe fit the contour of the head a little bit better. And then I'm going to do one more thing. With this selection here, I'm gonna control minus until it's just the back faces there, G and then Z and just move those back just a little bit more, make that hole a little bit deeper. Okay, and let's see what we have. Okay, that's that's I think a lot a lot better here. Good enough for our purposes. And let's do this one here. This is going to be a little bit tricky, but it's going to be basically the same as we've done just here with this one. But we need to figure out which faces we need to select. I think we can just get away with selecting these two. And then I to inset those. Right click and circle. Uh, let's play around with this. Um, angle here and side and how flat is that I don't think I need to flatten that anymore I think that's pretty pretty good okay so let's extrude that in and this time before I do anything else it's gonna be easier without doing the loop cuts just yet if I just control plus take that whole thing R Z Z so I'm rotating it on the global Z so that goes back and then Rx, just X once, because then that's, we're gonna go down. Let's go into wireframe here and kind of see this and position this a little bit more. There we go, yeah. So it's kind of like pushing up that way a little bit. Let's 
rotate that just a tiny bit more on the X. And that's the local X there. Okay, and then uh, what we can do is take these and just double G to slide these out a little bit. And we will see what we have here first before we do anything else. I think the position is good. I just need to see, that's not too bad. Maybe take the back faces and G, Z and move those back just a little bit more. And we can also just define it a little bit better in the back only because here it's supposed to be more smooth. So something like that. I mean, we could tr we could try and add in another one here and see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. Just grab those and pull those out so that it, um, yeah. Cool. I like it. I like it. Uh, but now we have to reproject, so make sure that we can view it accurately with our texture. So let's come back to here. We want to project in the front and on the side um, because even though it's mainly on the side, so if we go to the side first, we want to select our side over here. And even though we don't see it over here on the side, it doesn't really matter all that much. This is just a display. So you project from view and then that has, you can see it here. And that has fixed that. Uh, and then in the front, uh, we can see it here. It'll still look like a bit of a mess over here, but you'll see some things move. So you project from view, you can see it, there we go. And let's come back to our layout. And there we go. So we've got our beginning of our holes done. The circular holes starting to add a little bit more realism to everything here and you can see uh, it's not really pinching or causing any problems around our model which is exactly what we want okay so we've got the circular holes done in the next video or two we're going to go over the square and these little indents here where it merges up into the rest of the skull and back here as well so when you're ready head on over to the next one